everyone, it's Bloom here, and welcome to my Let's Play of Clock Tower The First Fear. Um, this was voted on as the game, the horror game I would do for Halloween. I did not specify which uh, Clock Tower game I would be doing, but we are going to do the first two, which is Clock Tower The First Fear and Clock Tower for the PlayStation 1, or alternatively named Clock Tower in Japan, and Clock Tower 2 <laughs> is the sequel. Um, Okay, let me explain. So, the first Clock Tower game, this is what we're playing. We're playing a port of it for the PlayStation 1, but it was originally released in 1995 on the Super Nintendo. Uh, it was one of the first survival horror games. Um, and it's honestly, it's probably the first true survival horror game, in my opinion. There were other games like uh, Sweet Home and Alone in the Dark, which I guess you could... Was Alone in the Dark before 1995, I think it was, um, that uh, could be classified. Well, they are horror games. But this is the first real survival horror game, in my opinion, because it's the only one that, uh, it's the first one that actually contains survival horror mechanics. I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean by that as we play. So this is, it was officially released under the title Clock Tower the First Fear in Japan, um, and that is the name of the port of the this PlayStation game. Um, it's usually referred to as Clock Tower the First Fear, regardless of whether it actually is the port, uh, just to distinguish it from um, clock, uh, the PlayStation game, the sequel that was released under the title just Clock Tower outside of Japan. So we're just going to be referring to the Super Nintendo version and all of its ports as Clock Tower the First Fear. Um, so yes, this is a port. It's an enhanced port, a slightly enhanced port. Uh, there are some little better sound quality, uh, generally, um, better graphics, but only slightly. It's pretty much the same game, just with some slight enhancements. And this is a fan translated version uh, because the official translated version, I think, I don't, the game was never officially released outside of Japan, but there is a, an official translation. I don't actually know how that works, honestly. Um, but uh, there is a Super Nintendo version. You can find it in English. And um, this is a port that was only recently fan translated, like about five years ago in 2015, I think. Um, 2014 or 15. And um, I actually have not played this one fully yet so uh any new things any things that are um that were added in from uh the super nintendo version is going to be a surprise for me as well we are going to do all of the endings uh starting in the playlist from ending h and going up to a i mean up to s s is the best ending um i'm going to show you as many death scenes as possible i'm going to try to insert intersperse the different death scenes uh, throughout each scenario so it it isn't too monotonous um i'm gonna try to show you as much as possible uh so we uh let's start start love that sound Raised in the Granite Orphanage, Jennifer and her friends were unexpectedly wanted as adopted daughters in September of that year. Laura, hurry up! We need to get there before it gets dark. Miss Mary? Hmm? What kind of house will we be living in soon? <laughs> now, that's the fifth time this evening. You don't need to worry, though. It's a gorgeous mansion. Not long now, I think. See?
that's not ominous at all. What a large house! True. It's so huge, and this is only the foyer. As I'm your teacher, I'll go greet the owner of the mansion. Everyone, stay put. Oh, I have control now. Hey, Anne. You wonder what kind of person Mr. Burroughs is. Right? Yeah. Burroughs is just an alternate uh, romanization of Barrows. Um, it wasn't actually specified in the Japanese version uh, which it was, if it was Burroughs or Barrows. This translation is decided to translate it as Burroughs. But they're the same thing. Somehow. Huh? It's just so big. I can't stand it. I prefer if they left it as Barrows, but it's not a big deal. Just my personal preference. It sounds creepier. Plus, it, it was what they said in the PlayStation Clock Tower. It's so empty here, I'll never get used to it. Lot, don't be such a wimp. Hey! Maybe you can go and find our teacher. Why don't you go do it, Anne? Get off your lazy butt and do it. It's an ordinary table. Probably going to be examining, like, everything in this game. Um, in the Super Nintendo version, the uh, translation of that, uh, m a lot of the time when she just examines stuff, even though she did say stuff in the original Japanese, it just goes um, dot 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 dot. And this is something that the um, translation of the PlayStation version aimed to fix. So we have that. I wonder what's up with our teacher. Usually it is uh, probably more interesting than her just saying it's a, an ordinary table. <laughs> Miss Mary, sure is taking a while. Do you want me to go look for her? No, I'll look for her. It's coming from the main foyer! Hey, stop joking around. This table is suspicious. It's an ordinary table. Guys. So now you can run just by pressing the trigger buttons. Uh, and, um... It won't open. Um, and when she, her energy depletes, and it does so pretty quickly, uh, her character portrait will change um, her uh, the color in the background. Blue means she's good. Uh, green is fine. Brown 
uh, brownish orange is uh, then it goes brownish orange um, and then it will finally go to red and that means that if you get caught by Bobby or something else and you need to panic the panic just won't work um, however this is only true on the PlayStation version uh, in the Super Nintendo version you can keep your health at red and it won't even matter <sighs> she uh, you can just um, pre uh, press panic and as long as you uh, do that You'll be fine. Um, ooh! It's impossible to get over there. But if you're playing the PlayStation version, you need to watch out for, uh, watch her energy. Because right now, if we get caught, uh, then... No, get up. Uh, if we get caught, then we are dead. Like, even if we panic, we're dead. And that's how, um, it is in, uh, the, the next two games as well. Um, in order to restore your energy, you just have to go into a room and uh, wait. There's no button that you press uh, in order to make her rest. It just happens automatically. Um, if you keep waiting and no resting happens, she just keeps standing there, uh, it means that you cannot rest in that room. <laughs> It's very strange. It, it, it's coded so it only allows you to rest in certain rooms. Or... Well, she should be resting now. I don't understand why she's not. Yeah, it's really weird. Sometimes she just doesn't rest. Come on, Jennifer. And I, I will cut a lot of that out because... There, finally. Um, I'll cut a lot of that out uh, because it does take a while and get it gets annoying. We, we don't want to just walk everywhere. Um... But honestly, in this version, we might have to. Um, so this is the part where it uh, starts branching out. Um, so I will, they removed annotations, so I can't do the cool annotations thing, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> something different can happen every time you play the game. Um, each time you beat the game, uh, depending, and it factors in what ending you get as well. Each time you beat the game, some different things can occur, like rooms can change location or stuff like that. Sometimes eyes appear, sometimes the curtains blow. It's just really cool things like that. That's what I was talking about when I said, um, survival horror mechanics, because, um, just, uh, like, if there's a game like Sweet Home, um, which is just a turn-based RPG, Essentially, um, you can have horror themes in it, but uh, this is the first game, I think, that I have encountered. There may be others that actually contain survival horror mechanics that are, like, designed to make you feel scared and vulnerable. Um, so that's what I really like about this game. It's a classic. Um, so yeah, I am going to put the links to the different endings in the description. You can watch them uh, in whatever order you want, but I recommend going from H to S. Um in ascending order, uh, because that is the, uh, that's the way I'll be recording them. Uh, so I will see you then.